Hello. Today we are going to break down the solution to all your problems. Well, at least the solution that most people think is the problem to growing their business, to growing as a trainer, and that is leads. Now, on my social media, on almost a daily basis, I get someone hit me up for more leads. Every conference we go to, someone is like, if I only had more leads, that would solve my problems. So Dr. J, what's, what's a better question that they could be asking to solve this problem? Well, if the problem is more revenue for the business that they're trying to solve, and you're thinking leads, maybe depends on your business model, and it also depends on your personality and what you're good at and where your strengths are. So those are the two things that I like to think in thinking about, is it leads or is it adding value? So check out this full episode to get the answer. Welcome to Becoming the Ultimate Fitness Coach with the Jock and the Doc Podcast, where fitness meets behavioral science. Join your hosts, Scott Schutte, a seasoned personal trainer, gym owner, and 360 wellness coach, and Dr. Janine Steister, a PhD behaviorist and expert in all things behavior change, as they share their combined expertise to empower fitness professionals like you. With practical tips, cutting edge topics, and industry leading guests, you'll learn everything from motivation and goal setting to habit formation and overcoming obstacles. Whether you're a seasoned fitness pro or just starting off your coaching journey, Becoming the Ultimate Fitness Fitness coach is your essential guide to mastering the art of coaching and changing lives. Okay, Dr. J, let's let's kick it off with the personality. When when we're talking about personality for more leads or whatever else we should be thinking about, um, break that down. How should someone think about that? Well, what what do you enjoy doing? So as we know, whatever you tend to enjoy doing, what you're naturally better at, you're going to succeed in. The things that we aren't so great at and don't enjoy, we tend to push off to the side or we just don't tend to dive into quality for it. So when I think about leads, certain people love the sale. They love the pursuit. They like to figure out the marketing, figure out um, you know, who the avatar is and how to bring them in and then how to close that sale. They just truly enjoy that process. And if that's you, then I, I think in your model, because your business model has to fit this, then that kind of makes sense that that's pursuing. And again, it still has to build into your business model. But if you're somebody that is just really enjoys the client aspect of it and really about how the, the business is framed and how you're supporting them and all of the little small pieces in between, then pursuing the leads is probably not what you need to be focused on. Yeah, and I like to think of this as looking at your business model, what you want to do to help you stand out, and even the size of the market that you're in. Yep. Like, I live in a town that's 120,000 people. So it's not like millions and millions of people. So I can just like churn and burn. So I can just get leads, right? have them come in. If they go, no big deal. Because I also want to be the best in town. And to be the best in town, you need to provide a quality that's better than everybody else. And so I really like taking the, the approach of like, I'm going to provide the best service. I'm going to provide the most value. Yep. And from that, I can charge more than anybody else. So instead of thinking more leads in, I'm making more per, per person. So most of people are ultimately looking for more take home, more profitability. But it's, it's easy to get into the situation of like, well, I'm already a good trainer. I know I am. Yeah. If I just had more leads, that would solve the problem. And I think that the reason why my partner and I have had so much success in the business and you know, we've been trainers for 20 years, own our gym for 14 years, is we've never stopped learning. And that would be my one biggest piece of advice for all the coaches out there of to be good, to be one of the best, you need to continuously be learning from the best. And if you do that, then there's certain points where you can do a little bit of this marketing push. You can go after the leads. Yeah. And that can make your gym really blow up because... I really like the saying of, you can't sell shit to the same person twice. <laughs> and if you don't have a very good service, they're not gonna continue to buy. And then you have to go after that leads game, which I don't think is the best game to play. Yeah, and there's a couple of things you said there too, of like, you talked about yourself, like I wanna be the best. And I think that's also really good to know about yourself. And also if that's not you, to acknowledge that as well. 
because some people don't. They just want, I want revenue. I want a lot going, like they have a certain vision of what they want out of this business. And I think it's really important to, to write that down, to think about that. Because if, if being the best is not your goal and the goal is just volume, yep. then n make sure that your business model and the services you provide are linked to that. But also just acknowledge that and really own that. But if you do want to be the best, then best at what? What does that look like for you? And then how can you create those systems and processes um, to do that? Because to your point also, depending on your market, depending on the people that you have, the reputation, all of those things is, and the other part to this too is you might be somebody, and I think you would be one of those people that you don't mind the sale. You don't mind that interaction type of thing, but you also want value and you want to do the best. Well, there might be additional services or other things where that sales can be part of that that you enjoy, but you're still providing that high level of quality, even if that's just what your clients are sticking with. Yeah, and I think a good way to think of this is like you have Planet Fitness over here, $10 a month. Hopefully they can get a ton of people to sign up and not come in because they don't really have that much square right. footage to handle all the people. Or you can have us where we're more one-on-one, -on -one, most expensive place in town. And then there's a lot of places in between. But figuring out where you can stand out in your, your market is super important because to get those leads, you have to have some way to draw people in. And so Planet Fitness is great because they are the cheapest and that is definitely an attraction. Yep. And if you're on the other end, you're like, we're the best. That's definitely an attraction. Yeah. And so figuring out for you, you know, because this is important for also getting leads, is like, how are you going to stand out in the market? So, you know, when I got into this game, you know, close to 20 years ago, uh, doing a lot of continuing education, there was a lot of coaches that were really big on just going to a lot of trainings, getting really good at coaches. And there wasn't as much talk about the marketing and the leads and stuff like that. I feel like that in the last 10 years or so, that's become really more um, front of mind for, for many coaches. But it's amazing to me how many of those coaches that were originally there 20 years ago that put in the time to become good coaches, they kept with it over a time, period of time because that's also important. You got to put in your time and how successful they are right now. Now, I'm sure at some point they had to learn some of the marketing, some of the sales. Yeah. But... There's so much to learn at first. Like we're talking about exercise science. We're talking about nutrition science. Our big thing is behavior science, learning yeah. that. And just being a good coach. Like there's a lot to go right there. And so for, for all my young coaches, I'm really recommending them just focus on that aspect for the first few years of business. Find a good place to work at that you can learn. They have good mentors. Yeah. And then after you have a good base of like, I, I get good results with clients, I have a lot of high client satisfaction, I have good retention, yeah. then doing more of the business side because that's a whole another skill set to learn. And then you can learn on to blow up that good service that you already have. Yeah, and the other thing that I like to have people think about, especially if we're really talking about this leads notion, is what problems do you want? Because no matter what business model, what personality type, what you're offering clients, there, there's challenges. Yeah. Um, to use the word loosely, right? So which ones do you want and are you creating your own challenges? So for example, if you don't have an amazing sort of office manager, front desk, coordinating, scheduling, um, following up with clients type of situation and you're constantly trying to get more leads, but you're also losing all yeah. of those people because you don't have that, you're creating your own challenge and have, and if you would just fix or improve one area of it, you actually wouldn't have to do as much as the other, for example. The opposite can be as well is that some people, um, you know, I hear them talking about like, I need more leads, more whatever, but they don't have the schedules figured out. They don't have it figured out like, how many trainers do I need at these really high end times, these high times when people mostly want to train? How do I keep my trainers happy, my coaches happy when there isn't a lot of client time or these split shifts and all of those things? So if you're not putting all of those pieces together, you might be bringing in more people, but then you're also maybe churning out your coaches because they're not happy because you keep bringing more people in, but you're not making their experience feel like a career and a place that they can grow and represent. So it's really thinking about what are those challenges? Which ones do you want to tackle and that are you good at 
or where do you need support? And then also just pay attention to make sure that you're not creating your own need. Yeah, and it's such a good point because leads are just a very small sliver of the overall uh, puzzle that we have to figure out. Because you know, if we're talking here, leads are, we have leads coming in, awesome. That's, that's a good start. But we need to get them in to actually have the first initial consult or discovery call or whatever you want to call it. And there has to be good communication for that. And then you have to have the sales part of it. And then you have to execute that. And then you have to worry about retention. And then you have to worry about, you know, even how your business even set up. Do you have the margins to make profitability? Yeah. Then you have to think about staffing and making sure that there's satisfaction there. And there's, there's a lot of pieces to it. So instead of just focusing just on the leads, kind of looking and seeing where the weak point is. You know, almost every coach I, coach I talk to, um, their retention is amazing and their sales is, is amazing. <laughs> they're killing it. They're all just amazing at what they yeah. do. But like when you really dive into the numbers of it, it's not as good as they usually think it is. And so really figuring out where that weak link is and, and work on strengthening that. And it could be leads, but uh, more often, uh, that's where all the focus is going. And that's why they have to keep focusing on more leads because there's so much leakage in the other areas of part of the system. Yeah, and and I, I think it's just really hard to argue that you're gonna have a strong, good business model without some value. So even if you're somebody that is separating yourself from your facility, doesn't wanna work in it as much and things like that, um, or it's not your natural gift or where your brain's at anymore, is who do you have on your team that can work on the value, that can build that? So, and I always say this with personalities, if you know where you are in the season of your life, what's important to you, what you're interested in, what you're burned out on, and your personality, and then figure out to your point, like where are my weaknesses in the, the system? And then who can I plug in to help with those pieces so that I can still enjoy who I am and what I want to enjoy? but making sure these other things are really locked tight so that I can have a successful business going forward. Yeah, so as we wrap up here, uh, think about this as you, you know, take a step back, look at the, the whole picture here, looking from not just the leads, although they're nice, everyone loves leads, but looking at the, the onboarding process, looking at the sales process, looking at how can we provide more value, how do we stand out? Because that's important for us to even to get leads. And just thinking about all those different aspects, because if you if you go through each one of those and each quarter, you're like, all right, we're gonna improve this one. And then each quarter, we're gonna figure out where the weakest leak is and improve that. Over a couple of years, you're gonna have a strong thriving business and you're gonna stop thinking about how do I get more leads? So hopefully this was some good thought bubbles for you to be thinking about in regards to this notion, leads, value, and overall business model and drop us a comment, let us know what you think, what you found successful, and any topics you'd love us to cover. See you next time.